guys, welcome back to Dish Nation. Now, my guest today needs no introduction. She is the matriarch of Greenleaf on OWN. Lynn Whitfield, welcome to Dish Nation. Thank you, thank you for having me. And now, here we are talking about the finale. I know, isn't it exciting though? Five seasons of storylines and characters that our audience has come to love. So it's just been so rewarding to, to bring this to life over this five years and to have people be so supportive of it and to leave them wanting more. So, I, I mean, you and Oprah had worked together before, and then obviously you worked together on Greenleaf. Will we see you working together again, possibly? Wouldn't that be great? Please talk to Oprah and see. We should do something. I think we have great synergy as actresses together. Now, I have to ask you, because in 91, you played another iconic character. You played Josephine Baker. You opened the door to her, I feel like, to people who might not have known about her. So how rewarding was it for you to play Josephine freaking Baker? Oh my goodness, for me to be the vessel to bring her to the world, it was such a such a blessing and so exciting to be, you know, on the Danube River in Budapest telling this story. So just great. And then get the Emmy, Golden Globe nomination. And some of the awards that I got nominated for, they don't even have anymore. <laughs> they don't even <laughs> do them anymore. I want to serve a little tea on you, a little something we like to call serve the tea on Lynn. You tell me if they're true or if they're false. Now, I'm going to plead the fifth on these. I did not write them, so okay. I don't know what they say. So don't blame me if something's shady, okay? I won't. Okay, I think right. if I were more shady, more people would know who I am. I think I need to get more shady is what needs to happen. All right, well, we could change that on Dish Nation if you really want to. No, no, no. Please, be kind to me. Okay, true or false, your favorite pig out food is pizza and hot wings. No! My favorite pig out food is Jamaican oxtails. Okay. Yes, you know, I always go towards the culture. So it's the culture. <laughs> okay, after playing Brandy Maxwell in the movie Thin Live Between Love and Hate, is it hard to date men because they feel intimidated by you? Listen, and Lady May do. I mean, this is not my career. My artistry has really, like, <laughs> me around in this, in this regard, right? You know, playing all these tough, complex women, you know? <sighs> Single, here I am, sitting here in my house. So, yes, I think that's true, yes. Um, well, okay, Moving so on, next, well, next. Well, no, I want to know, what kind of man do you want, Lynn? I'm going to give this, this can be your video Tinder right here. What, well, just tell the masses. I love a great sense of humor. You know, I love a man who loves music. I love, of course, you know, being a good looker is a good thing. And still filled with purpose and excited about life, you know? The craziest thing you've ever done was marry a man you knew for only five months. Lord knows it's the truth. <laughs> I did. I fell in love with the director, but I think because I wouldn't have sex with him at that time, that's why we got married so fast right after the show. So maybe my chastity wasn't the best thing. I would like to thank my lovely guest, Lynn, for joining us today. The premiere of Greenleaf is June 23rd, only on OWN. And, and you know, and you touched on something, because the world right now is changing, and we are seeing people come out for Black Lives Matter around the world. We are seeing protests and people standing up for equality. What does this time in the world mean to you right now? It's incredible. You know, when I grew up, it was, there was a leader that you followed, right? So I never understood until now what they were going for with Black Lives Matter, because there is no one voice. They believed, and I would, I'd talk to people and talk to you know, the people who started, I said, I don't, you know, understand because, you know, we're used to someone leading us into, and this way to see the combustion of people seeing this injustice and being so hurt and so disappointed and so moved that it just springs up out of people's pain. It, out of their, 
need for change, out of a need for everyone to be together and share the moment together and try to right the wrong together without a leader. Have you ever seen anything like it? It's I inspiring. Believe, I could not believe that the marches that were going on in, in London and Berlin and Brazil, it all simultaneously, I am, I'm so moved at this, this new burst of energy for fairness and for justice uh, at this time. And I just, my prayer is that it can be kept up until things are made better, you know? Because we're not, you know, I don't, it's not, it's not that all policemen are bad, you know, it, but to find another way of hiring people, there have to be some litmus test for people who really are there to protect the peace and the citizens or there to fight with them and kill them, you know, and keep them in line, you know, that just is not going to work. And, you know, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So for most of my life, you know, we knew that there were protocols, but it is getting out of hand right now. I knew when, when Trayvon Martin happened, that it would just give so many people the license to, to be as destructive and violent as we've seen, you know? Do you feel that there's hope? Do you feel personally now in 2020, are you seeing hope? My hope is for 2020 into 2021. My hope is that um, the act of voting can be a fair one. Uh, my hope is that we can win back the Senate, that Joe Biden is our president, and we can have a continuity of belief systems, and one which is much more um, collaborative because right now we're just hitting up against brick walls. Um, but one thing is for sure, this idea of people being the minority, that women, because if you put women, Latina people, black people, gay people, Asian people together, this is not a minority. There is truly a majority of like-minded people in this country. And I don't know what this electoral college, but we're not the minority. So if we can gather this majority and focus it on this vote, I'm very hopeful about that. And I am so hopeful and so grateful that everyone is keeping up this protest. But you know, things have to go to the Senate and we've got to get all this down ballot voting because we vote for the people who choose the police force. And um, so I am hopeful because they're seeing that we want difference, that we have very little patience for it. Just all the way through, you know, I've lived a little while and you just say, God, please let it, let it be, let it be right at this time, you know? Yeah. Oh, you're giving me chills, Lynn. God, I'll, I'll vote for you. Maybe you should run for public office. Oh, uh, no, you know, I'm too honest because at a certain point, <laughs> I, I think I think I would just get into my Lady Mayism and my woman from Louisianaism and just tell them like it is. But you know what? It's not that. It's the same thing as being a storyteller because you got to love humanity to to want to save it. you got to and be able to accept you know, white people, black people, queer people, you know, um, sometimes boringly stiff people, but we're all in this together. <laughs> and, you know, even the ones that we don't find the most interesting. And you just got to love mankind and want it to be a better world for everybody. I mean, that's, it, it, we have no other choice because guess what? Seeing these numbers right now of people, you have to be really deaf, dumb, and blind to not see that, you know, what it, was it Otis Redding who said a change is going to come? You know, that you have to, you, you, it just can't, darkness cannot sustain itself. 
in the presence of light. And I think right now there's a whole bunch, you know, shining through. So that's a long way round to say, yes, I'm very hopeful, but we have to be vigilant and we can't accept any wooden nickels right now or redheaded clowns. We got to really kind of, you know, stick to it. And at the end of the day, after we march, get to the ballot box and make sure that it's fair, you know, and change things. <laughs>